In this lesson, we're going to learn more about triads, and we're going to learn especially about how they relate to keys and scales. So let's suppose that we're in C major. We already mentioned last time that each note of the scale has the potential to be used as the root of a triad. Let's look at these triads and look at what their qualities are and, and especially how we might name them. Now, because, because these exist in relation to the key and because the root is so important, we're going to name these triads in terms of the root. So you can, the, same num, the same name that you give to the root, you can give to the triad. So this is the tonic triad, the supertonic triad, the median triad, the subdominant triad, the dominant triad, the submedian triad, and the leading tone triad. Okay, they simply get names from the scale degree of their root. Now they can also be numbered, except where we numbered scale degrees using carats, we're going to number triads using Roman numerals. And with some extra symbols in there to help us see what the qualities are. So, a major triad will always receive an uppercase Roman numeral. A minor triad will receive a lowercase Roman numeral. And you should be able to see, because based on your knowledge of intervals right away, major, minor, minor. So scale degree three, so I use a minor triad, use a lowercase Roman numeral three. Scale degree four, major triad, et cetera. Now, what do I do if I have a diminished triad? Because this is what I get on seven. I use a lowercase Roman numeral, and I follow that by a little, uh, little degree sign, a little circle right there. So that is my symbol for, uh, for a diminished triad. So if I put a general key up here, major is uppercase, minor, is lowercase, diminished, is lowercase with a circle. Well, there's one left, isn't there? This was all, assuming C major, supposing we're in A minor, if, again, we're not, we're not actually going to do this in real music, but suppose that we use the notes from the harmonic minor scale and we write a median triad. That's an augmented triad. We're going to use an uppercase Roman numeral. We're going to add a superscripted plus. So augmented triads, uppercase with a plus. This actually points to something very important. This system, this, this, these Roman numerals, are often considered one of, the, uh, one of the main steps in moving toward somewhat more advanced music theory and some understanding of harmony. So one of the things that you will be able to do, as soon as you can sort out what notes belong to the chord and which notes don't, you'll be able to take a piece of uh, standard Western music and you'll be able to throw chord symbols underneath and label all these chords. And I want to caution you at this point, because this can give an illusion of understanding. The fact you have a label, you'll be able to say, ah, I can label all these things and say what they are. And yes, there's a degree of understanding there. But as we'll discover throughout this semester uh, and beyond, each of these has very specific uses and participates in very specific patterns. So until you understand what those patterns are, the fact that you are able to put these labels on, uh, doesn't really indi indicate a whole lot of genuine understanding. So just, uh, just be careful. It's all about the way those numbers get used, the patterns that those, that those various chords participate in. The labels themselves really don't mean a whole lot. And this is a good example why, because in theory, based on what we know about scales and on this basic thing, we can say, okay, we can use any scale and we can use, uh, you know, we can make triads based on the root and adding notes from the scale, it would seem like we should be able to do this. But in fact, this is an object that we're not actually going to encounter. And you may think 
that you encounter this in real music, but if you do, we're going to give it a different label. Although the reasons for that are, uh, we won't be able to see until near the end of the semester. Uh, okay, so here are basic chords in minor. We can do exactly the same thing, uh, sorry, basic chords in major. We can do exactly the same thing in minor, and if we use the harmonic minor form of the scale, for convenient, oh, uh, let's sorry, we'll do that a little bit better. Use the harmonic minor form of the scale. So I'm going to use a B natural, raising my leading tone. I'm going to have one as a minor chord, two now as a diminished chord, three is major, four is minor. Five would have been minor and natural minor, but instead it's major. Six is also major. And as in major, seven is diminished. Now, if I rewrite what these chords were back when we were in C major to allow us to compare, there are two patterns I want you to observe. First, what does well, one is that we're not going to use this raised leading tone in our three chord. We're going to leave it alone, but more on that later. What do we use this for? We use this leading tone to imitate the chord qualities that we have in major. This would have been a major chord. We want it to be diminished. This would have been a minor chord. We want it to be major. So we're imitating our major chord qualities. That's the first thing I want you to observe. The second is that if we go back to, let's go back to the natural minor here. Suppose that we had a minor five chord. You remember how we talked about three chord songs? Those are one, those use one, four, and five. And what I want you to observe is that in major and in natural minor, one, four, and five are the chords that share the same quality as the tonic triad. We will occasionally encounter different forms of chords. So for example, we might see a minor five every once in a while. Most of the time we'll see a major five. We may see a diminished seven a lot of the time, but a lot of the time we'll also see a diatonic major seven triad. As we talked about before uh, with keys in general, when we talk about chords, you don't need to specify oh, we're in C harmonic minor. We're just in C minor. These chords both belong to C minor because every form, of the nat every form of the minor scale is available as a repertoire of pitches for chords in, natural, in, in minor keys. So these both belong to the key of C minor. And we use these inflected Roman numerals, so lowercase with the, with the circle, uppercase here, to let us know which form of the scale we're using. So we can see immediately what the, what, the, what the quality of the chord is. Now here I should give you an important note. Uh, we are using a set of lecture notes that uses this standard use of Roman numerals. I'd say the majority of theory curricula, at least in this country, and probably uh, more widely than that, use inflected Roman numerals. Now the textbook that we use as a, a supplemental resource is an outstanding book. There's fantastic understanding contained in this textbook, but you need to be aware of something, and that is that you have to translate into another dialect. That textbook will always use uppercase Roman numerals, and it will never do anything in particular, or at least not the, the, the same kinds of things, to show you uh, how the quality of the chord has been inflected. So if you see something like this, a major two chord, well wait a second, two is minor in major and diminished in minor. What is this, a major two chord? They expect you to know, okay, you're in a minor key, that's really a diminished chord. They're just always using uppercase triads. It does not mean that they're talking about all major chords. So it's just a little bit of mental translation that you're gonna have to do when you use the textbook. But uh, I find that people get used to it pretty quickly and it doesn't have to be a big deal. So just remember, for everything that you do and in all the lecture notes, 
we're always using this system, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase with a plus, lowercase with a circle, to indicate the quality of the triad, labeling with the Roman numeral with the number corresponding to the scale degree of the root.